Good evening. How are we doing? All right. Great. Thanks. That's enough. Yep. But, um, you know, when you're preparing for a speech like this, you might catch yourself and, you know, you might be like, I don't know what to wear. You know, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should go with the professional look, right? So I, that's what I decided to do. And I know what you're all thinking. I know you're all thinking, oh, he, he can't pull it off. And honestly, you're right. So that's why I decided to wear the jersey of the greatest basketball player of all time. And I'm here to settle the debate between Michael Jordan and LeBron James for the best player ever. And now, today, we're here to, I'm here to look deeper than the surface, and I'm going to hit you with the cold, hard facts. Although I have never gotten the chance to meet uh, Michael Jordan, I have been able to meet LeBron James. And with him, I was able to do magic tricks for him. I had dinner with him and my dad. And honestly, it, um, he showed a great amount of interest in the things that I was doing. And something I noticed now that I didn't notice back then was just like how great that was you know the fact that this man who was considered one of the best at his time was able to take the time out of his day you know to sit down and do magic tricks with this nine-year-old kid and you know that just shows a lot to his character and um you know and i know that jordan a lot of jordan fans aren't going to be very happy with me when, um but also my words can only mean so much and that's why i'm going to hit you with the facts right now and you know we hear a lot about jordan going six to know in his NBA Finals appearances, but we don't hear about how he was six and seven in his 13 postseasons for going to the finals, while LeBron is eight for 12 or eight and four in his 12 postseasons for going to the NBA Finals. We also, we don't hear about how LeBron was an underdog in more than half of his finals, while Jordan was surrounded by great talent and he was, an, he was an underdog in only one of his finals appearances. Now, I heard this metaphor by Callan Cowherd, who is a uh, well-respected NBA analyst, and he said that uh, LeBron is like oxygen and every other player is like calcium, including Jordan. And what he means when he says that is um, Jordan's Bulls team had 57 wins without him. He left the next year, they had 55 wins without him. Whereas uh, LeBron's Cavs, went to the NBA Finals with him. The next year he left, they are now the worst team in the league. And they've, as a matter of fact, they've been the worst team in the league for two years in a row now. And the meaning of that metaphor is basically to say that, you know, you can live with a little less calcium. But you try living without oxygen, it probably won't go too well for you. And now statistically, LeBron has Jordan beaten on a lot. LeBron has the advantage on all-time NBA first team selections and per game statistics on rebounds, blocks, and assists. Now, Jordan does have, uh, he has NBA championships over LeBron, league MVPs, and points per game. And LeBron is, but LeBron is also the only player to have 30,000 points, 8,000 assists, and 8,000 rebounds. And this just shows to, not only was LeBron the greatest player of all time, but he's most the impactful player to be able to put up that, that amount of assists, rebounds, and points shows to his team play and how he can impact the players around him. Um, I believe that statistics show that LeBron is better, um, but many are still a bit hesitant to call him the greatest of all time. And understandably, that is because we've been calling, you know, we've been calling Jordan the greatest for how long now? And uh, it's tough for people to wrap their heads around the fact that, you know, there is this new player who could be better than him or just as good as him, you know? Um, but understand that I'm not trying to bad talk Jordan here. Uh, you know, he's a very close second to LeBron in um, terms of greatest player of all time. But when we talk about um, character on and off the court, I believe that LeBron has Jordan beaten on a lot of that. And you see, there's been many talks about Jordan in his interview. He talks a lot about his own personal game and how he played rather than to his team. And you can see that through his stats as well. You know, he's credited as the greatest scorer of all time. But that doesn't show a lot to, you know, his his team play and how he actually is. But um, he once said in an interview that he said there's no I in team, but there is in win. And, you know, I mean, that shows how great of a competitor he was and he wanted to win. But, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't bode well for him when we talk about team game and uh, and staying grounded, you know. But um, I believe that this debate is frequently happens between uh, sports watchers and anyone really in that community because this is just 
I mean, it's an ongoing debate. So I feel that the public should really be educated so that can, they can have, you know, these um, like intelligent conversations because I've been in a few situations where I'm getting the conversation, the person's just not educated on their information. So I feel that the public should be educated on this topic. And um, that is why I gave my TED Talk today. So thank you all for coming out and uh, have a fantastic night.